Welcome to a world where shootings, kidnappings and gang warfare are just part of the job. We're going on the journey to meet the real deal. Law enforcers who put their lives on the line every day, patrolling the most dangerous beats on the planet. So buckle up, cos we're about to roll with the world's toughest cops. Papua New Guinea is one of the most remote countries in the world. An idyllic wilderness, home to over 800 different tribes, unchanged for thousands of years. But below the tranquil surface lies a long history of tribal conflict and bloodshed. And recently, this violence has moved from the isolated highlands to the streets of the capital city, Port Moresby. As gangs swap their spears and axes for homemade guns, carjackings, shootouts and revenge killings keep the city in the grip of terror. With the situation at breaking point, a recent poll officially named Port Moresby as the worst city in the world. And battling to control the chaos is the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary. <laughs> Cops are have to deal with violent criminals. The mentality here is like, uh, you don't listen to me, I'll kill you. There'll be no warning shots. We're gonna shoot you on the spot. Lawlessness on a massive scale. We have more than 300 kilograms of marijuana and a volatile political state that's seen the police turn on the army. The police was to throw tear gas into the military barracks. Papua New Guinea, or PNG, is located in the southwestern Pacific Ocean, just to the north of Australia. It has a population of just over six million, 300,000 of whom live in the capital, Port Moresby. Decades of corruption in government has left nearly half the population living below the poverty line. Making Port Moresby a divided city. The rich hide behind razor wire, while the poor live in sprawling shanty towns. As a result, criminal gangs known as rascals have emerged from the slums battling with the police for control of the streets. And these gangs have become more and more organised. A recent spate of audacious heists has left the police in the grip of a new crisis. Leading the fight against organised crime is the cop that PNG's criminals fear the most. Sergeant Apollos Terry of the CID unit. With 23 years in the force, nothing phases him. I have never been moved by threats, regardless of what sort of threats have been issued to me or my family. I should not be worried. It should be, it should be the other way around. The criminal should be worried that Apollo is actually on their trail. Morocco Police Station, in the centre of Port Moresby, is where the fight against organised crime is based. This rundown office is where the CID unit plan their raids on the country's criminal elite. I am prepared to put my life on the line. I've come across a lot of dangerous situations, and I haven't even given up yet. Apollos and his team are currently closing in on one of PNG's most wanted men, William Capis. So notorious, he's even featured on national television. Hello, and welcome to Crime Stoppers. Police intelligence has identified convicted prisoner KP, William Capis, as the mastermind behind the BSP bank robbery, Medang, in which over two million kina was stolen. Having escaped from prison while serving a 22-year sentence for the attempted murder of a cop, Capis has been on the run for the last two years. 
A major police operation has now been launched in an effort to track down Capis and his accomplices. Apollos and his team have spent months tracking him. And finally, all their hard work is coming together. They're putting the finishing touches to a plan to raid the gang's hideout later in the evening. But the mission is high risk. We got the intelligence that uh, they were armed, and um, we were expecting probably shootouts. It's 8 p.m. and the cops assemble for the raid. Just as they are leaving, Apollos decides it's too dangerous for our crew to go along. There's no way that just I could come. Sorry? There's no way that just I could come. No, I'm afraid not on this trip. No. <laughs> Backed up by PNG's heavily armed task force, the mobile squad, the unit are off to take down one of PNG's most wanted men. With a high chance of a shootout, they're heading out on one of the most dangerous missions of their careers. In Papua New Guinea and its capital port Moresby, the cops are up against violent criminals whose disregard for the law means they fear nothing. At Port Moresby's main police station, it's the morning after a CID raid to capture one of PNG's most wanted men, William Kappis. Covered in Kappis's blood, Sergeant Apollos Terry has been up all night. But finally, he has his man. After two years on the run, Kappis is behind bars, having been shot in both legs after a confrontation with the cops. He's being questioned over a gold bullion heist worth over half a million pounds, and also the killing of a cop, although so far no charges have been brought against him. He's also brought in 26 members of Kappis's gang, three of whom are serving cops, suspected to be on Kappis's payroll. Okay, basically what happened last night was uh, my men moved in into the area. We stopped them, we approached them in a very cautious way. Uh, he was considered dangerous and armed as well. So uh, when we moved in, we, uh, he tried to escape, so we wounded him. And he was taken to the hospital last night, treated and is now currently behind the bus. I am pleased and at the same time I am tired. <laughs> As forensics get to work on the evidence, the suspects, minus a seriously injured Capis, are led from the cells for questioning. Security has been stepped up around the station as Capis has a history of breaking out of prison. He was actually uh, caught on several locations, locked up in the cells, and he managed to escape from this. So we're taking every uh, precaution so that he does not um, escape again. We normally keep uh, the most dangerous one in a separate cells. That's the CID cell, so he's currently in one of those cells, separate cells. But there's not much chance of him escaping this time, as later that afternoon, even the cops can't open the cells. I think the guys lost the... Uh, to the cells, so we tried to get the doctors and the medical team to attend to him, but they could not because simply because the key to the lock was uh, misplaced. Eventually, a solution is found. So the guys just went in, cut the lock off, and they're attending to him now. With the situation under control, the police get to work processing the suspects. They need to get back out on the streets 
as suspected gang members are still on the loose. We're working on search warrants and all this, so as soon as we get the search warrants done, we will be conducting more raids. CID may have taken out Capis, one of PNG's most wanted men, but the country is plagued by deadly criminal gangs, the rascals. They terrorise the community with daring robberies in broad daylight. The gangs are notorious for armed hold-ups and brutal revenge killings. In Port Moresby, outside the fortified homes of the wealthy, 50% of the population live in makeshift slums. Usually controlled by the rascals, these settlements are often no-go areas, even for the police. But with the help of a local fixer, our crew arranged to meet a dangerous gang member deep inside rascal territory. Because he could be targeted by the cops, he asked to remain anonymous. Yeah, my gang's called 007. And how many of you are in the gang? Ah, oh, shit. It's more than 100. There are over 50 rascal gangs in Port Moresby who commit violent and brutal crimes. Uh, like hold-ups and cartels. We have the money and, uh, yeah, if you disturb or stop us to get the money, we kill him. It could be anybody, men, women or children. Do you worry about killing another person or do you not? Uh, no, I don't. How can I worry when there's plenty of people around? Rascal gangs are well armed, often with homemade guns made out of water pipes and umbrella springs. So with criminals making their own weapons, it's impossible for the cops to control the number of guns on the street. Do you own a gun? Yeah, I do own a gun. Now, it's a homemade gun, like I told you. Have you ever shot anybody? Yeah, but I didn't kill anyone yet. Maybe I had them too, but I didn't successfully kill someone yet. With this casual attitude to killing, the rascal spread terror across PNG. And one of the most feared crimes is carjacking. This footage, shot by an Australian reporter, shows the rascals in action. Sometimes we just stand by the road. And if you drive in to the shops or maybe your house, you just run after you, put the gun on your head, take you out of the car, get your car and go. Take him over. Take him over. Take him over. Take him over. If you don't cooperate, then we get to kill you. <laughs> There'll be no warning shots. Take over. Take over. We're going to shoot you on the spot. No! PNG's gangs may be ruthless, but according to this rascal, the police force is equally unforgiving. There's police there doing police brutality, but we don't give a fuck about it, you know? It feels like normal in this country. You know, everyone gets brutalised by police. Do you fear the police at all? Yeah. When the police catches us, it depends on them. If they want to shoot you, they shoot you. Uh, if you make a serious crime, they get to blow your legs off. In Papua New Guinea, everybody breaks the law. Even the uh, yeah, very own people that makes the law. In response to these allegations, the police said that there is no place in the constabulary for officers who abuse members of the public. They investigate all claims of abuse, and corrupt officers have been sacked and even imprisoned for abusing the law. The police in PNG are continuing their efforts to take action against anyone involved in brutality. In recent years, the criminals have become more and more daring in their attempts to outdo the cops. On the 23rd of December 1999, 
An audacious robbery signalled the start of a new crime wave in PNG. Four armed criminals, dressed as army officers, hijacked a helicopter and attempted to rob a bank in what became known as the Millennium Robbery. Sergeant David Terry was one of the first police officers called to the scene. What happened was they flew all the way to town and landed the chopper right on top of the bank, right behind me. After landing the chopper, the gunmen entered the bank through the top and they wanted to rob the bank. They wanted to open the vaults. But faced with armed resistance from the bank's security guards, the gang fled empty-handed and tried to escape in the helicopter. All the people in town looking at the chopper on the top of the building were so... It was very dramatic. There was a policeman who was on duty at the town police station. He ran in front of the building, took out his shotgun and shot at the helicopter as the chopper was trying to lift off from the building. The pellet hit the side of the chopper and uh, as the chopper was taking off towards the Port Mosby uh, harbour, it uh, crashed right in front of the waterfront. This is the scene where the helicopter came down, here. Almost rammed into this big building here. Flew past this way and fell right over here. Despite crashing 80 feet to the ground, the gang survived and were determined to get away. The occupants scrambled out and they started shooting at the police. So there was a gunfight going on here. The innocent pilot was trapped in the crossfire. The pilot was saved. The pilot was taken to safety by members of the police who were at the front of the harbour. With all bystanders out the way, the battle intensified. The boys, uh, they stood their ground and they shot three on the spot. Three of the gang members died immediately. While the fourth was caught by the police, having been injured in the shootout. You were lucky, mate. One of them was shot and captured, but because the, the boys were using uh, very high-powered weapons, uh, you know, he, he sustained a lot of injuries, and as he was taken to the hospital, he succumbed to his injuries and, injuries and died. Have you ever seen anything like it before? No, not in my history with the police force. It looked like a, um, a war zone or seemed like a terrorist attack, you know? Like what you see in, in, in London or in America. Despite the major crime epidemic in PNG, every year thousands of hopefuls apply to join the force. A few miles outside Port Moresby is the National Police Training Centre of Bumana. Police Constable Patrick Palangat has been a cop for two years. Now he's training to become a member of the most hardcore unit in PNG, the Mobile Squad. In his short time in the force, Patrick has learnt about the dangers of policing in PNG. Yeah, we get everything here. The mentality here is like, uh, you don't listen to me, I'll kill you. So that's what happens most of the time. They kill each other. Nowadays, rascals aren't afraid, so they're not afraid to open up on us. Even if we're in public. Sometimes we catch the crooks, but yeah, shit happens. <laughs> The mobile squad, otherwise known as SSD, is PNG's elite task force. They were formed to take down the country's most dangerous criminals. From the brutal city streets to the untamed badlands of the bush, their beat is one of the most extreme in the world. 
Getting into the mobile squad is far from easy. From over 4,000 applicants each year, only 26 are selected for the unit. Staying in is just as tough. On my goals. Today, Patrick must pass a fitness test, fail, and it's back to the street patrol with the regular cops. Oh, very exhausting. Can I swear? Yeah. Fuck me. The final test is a 10k run in the stifling 35 degree heat. Your time starts. Oh. Why do you love it so much? Uh, comradeship. It's like these guys, I don't know the past history, I don't know where they come from, but since we've come here, they've already watched my back, I've watched this. So we're pretty much brothers. The grueling run comes to an end. How's it go, Patrick? It's good. It's good. You think you passed? Yeah, I passed, definitely. Ask these guys, they'll tell you. How are you feeling? Fucked. I'm pretty fucked. <laughs> Having passed the test, Patrick knows that harder work lies ahead. Uh, nowadays, especially here in Mosby, there's a lot of uh, sort of bad feelings towards the police. So a lot of police personnel off duty, they get into trouble. I worry all the time. Basically, I might get bashed up or worse. Yeah, I worry about my life sometimes. Back at Barocco Police Station, Apollos and the CID team are holding a briefing. They are preparing for a string of raids. Two days ago, they captured William Capis, a man who they'd been hunting for two years. They also brought in 26 suspected members of his gang, three of whom were serving police officers. But not only are the unit risking their lives fighting the criminal element, there's also a danger from within the force. Some members of the team have been threatened by corrupt cops. I just want to make a comment here because we seem to be receiving numerous threats. Like it's not all of the police force are fighting against it. Because we are thinking of our family, we have to take it very seriously. Threats like this mean cops in PNG are fighting more than just the criminals. If you see uh, some sample of policemen, you look at some men, make him kind of you suspicious, you give him name, like I'm giving them metro. Any policeman step out of the line, I think there's no place for him in the police force. Okay, he's got to go. You put him out of them, trust him, nah, 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 nah. Let me walk by one them, now. let's move forward, okay? Okay, anything else? Any final comments? No? Okay. Despite the threats, there's work to be done. They're on the hunt for more members of Capus's gang. So Apollos sets off with 10 heavily armed members of the elite mobile squad. We're with the cops in Papua New Guinea, where the traditions of tribal culture mean the cops face an uphill battle to maintain law and order. Head of PNG CID unit, Sergeant Apollos Terry, and 10 heavily armed men are heading out on a string of raids, following the arrest of one of PNG's most wanted men, William Capis. There's a strong possibility the criminals will be armed, and so he's not taking any chances. When we arrive at the location, we will storm the house, surprise them. That's the best ammunition for such operations. We had intelligence reports that there were actually ammunition and firearms in that location. So if we do come across anyone with a firearm, we're ready for anything. After a tense 20-minute drive, the unit are deep in one of the city's settlements. Operational target now. They're not expecting us now, so I don't think they'll be rolling out the red carpet. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait,
when it comes to making an entrance, Atlas doesn't mess about. The gang doesn't appear to be in. They probably received a tip-off about the raid. The team get to work searching for evidence, linking the suspects to the robberies they believe Capis was involved with. We're looking for firearms or money that was stolen during the uh, robbery. It's not long before they make a shocking discovery. We found a uh, brand new uh, uniforms, military uniforms. What's the significance of the uniforms? Weird instances where major rob robberies are committed using military and police uniforms. So with what we found now, we'll probably try to connect them to the crimes that were committed using military and uh, police uniforms. This find could be a vital piece of evidence to help convict Capis and his gang of some of PNG's most high-profile robberies. Where do people get hold of our uniforms? They're probably from their friends in the military. Also from the police uniforms too, they're coming from the friends in the police force. OK. The police start loading the suspects' possessions onto their vehicles. They believe that many of the goods may have been bought with stolen cash. It doesn't work. You know, he's just a vagrant, and then see that very expensive things in his house, you know. So that's why we have to take him to the station, and then he has to come and produce receipts where he bought them, and then we can return them otherwise, you know. With the evidence collected, Apollos wants to move on to the next raid as quickly as possible. OK, you got 20 minutes. Okay, you start moving or something, I'll go to the next location before I'll start Ringo Gambuka. Yes, before I start Ringo Gambuka. We're going to a place called uh, Rainbow. That's our next target. We believe to be uh, uh, William Capri's accomplice. Such missions, uh, you know, it's always dangerous. As they arrive at the second location, the police move quickly to secure the area. <laughs> They find a number of suspected gang members in the garden. The team search the property. They discover a stash of ammunition. Unsurprisingly, none of the gang will admit to owning the bullets. So Apollos gets tough. <laughs> We found uh, three bullets. We will take them to the police station and ask them where the firearm is. Are they all under arrest? Yes, they're under arrest. The eight suspects are squeezed into a police van and taken back to the station for questioning. Police In Papua New Guinea, 
Not only are the cops battling against high levels of crime, a lack of resources means they're having to do it with one arm tied behind their backs. There are just 4,900 police officers in the entire PNG force, policing a population of over 6 million people. With so few cops, catching criminals is an uphill battle. And even if the cops do lock them up, they might not have to suffer the horrendous conditions for very long. The rascal that spoke to our crew alleges that there are ways of avoiding jail. The last job I did took me in prison. Fuck. Yeah, it was like breaking and the home hold up and cut it. But I escaped it. I paid the policeman to get my way out. Because if I don't, then I'll be in the prison. So I gave him a 50 and I came out. He got that money and accepted it with a smile, and I made no big deal out of it. 50 kina is the equivalent of just 11 pounds. Even police need money, you know? They don't get highly paid. How can you live with 300 kina when, uh, yeah, there's 3,000 kina offered to you for free? In response to these allegations, the police said that they recognise that there have been instances where prisoners have escaped from police custody in suspicious circumstances, and these cases are under investigation. If these allegations are proved, they will review their procedures to ensure that this doesn't continue. In the remote highlands, many villagers grow potent marijuana for sale in the city. and the drug trade is controlled by criminal gangs. They're often under the influence when they commit their brutal crimes. But the police are fighting back. Today, the vice squad are having a clear out. On wasteland just outside Port Moresby, they're burning marijuana seized during their drugs raids. Leading the battle against drugs is Inspector Joel Capinus. We have more than 300 kilograms of marijuana. There's so much uh, marijuana leaves that you need to make, make that weight. On the streets of the UK, these drugs would be worth more than a million pounds. But for PNG's criminals, the marijuana has taken on a far more sinister value. Drugs are being traded for guns too. It's a dangerous uh, trend now, like in Papua New Guinea. Before, arms is not, uh, not a problem, but now it's, uh, it's a problem. With the bonfire built, Joel sets fire to 300 kilos of grade A cannabis. As well as marijuana, the vice squad have been busy taking other illicit materials off the streets of PNG. Phonography is uh, it, it, illegal in PNG. You can't find any magazine such as uh, Playboy sold in a country. With PNG strict moral laws, there's some unusual items going on the fire. Some of those things that we refused in the country are sex aid materials like uh, penis and lodges or, or vibrators that uh, anything to do with sex connotations. It's really hot in here. The cops have burnt a huge amount of drugs. But they're not just up against criminals. Many villagers sell dope just to survive. Ordinary people from the villages, they cultivate marijuana and, 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 and sell them to get money uh, for the for children's uh, school fees and to buy basic meats for themselves. So it's not confined to, to criminals. Everybody um, sells marijuana. PNG is plagued by drugs, gangs and corruption. But when civil war broke out in 1990, the chaos reached new heights. 500 miles northeast of Port Moresby is Bourganville, one of over 600 islands that make up PNG. 
It was here that a dispute over one of the world's largest copper mines led to a bloody civil war that lasted nearly 10 years and claimed an estimated 50,000 lives. Angry Islanders formed the Baldenville Revolutionary Army, the BRA, and waged a guerrilla campaign against the government to stop them plundering the island's natural resources. With the army struggling to control the chaos, the police mobile squad were drafted in. Senior Constable Andrew Cumbia is a Bourganville veteran who did seven tours of duty during the conflict. The environment itself was very scary. You cannot see many people moving around. We have been shot that many times, but you don't know where the enemy is. For Andrew, the guerrilla fighting was a whole new world. Being a policeman, it's, it's very hard, because I, I haven't been trained as an uh, army personnel. I thought that uh, I was going to be a policeman, uh, not to be involved in a war. With no end in sight, the situation took a bizarre twist. When back in Port Moresby, the Bourganville conflict caused the police and the army to start fighting each other. A dispute with the government over funding sparked an army mutiny. Loyal to the government, the police launched an assault on the army's Port Moresby base. The police was to throw tear gas into the military barracks. Five army officers were injured during the attack. But while political tensions raged on the mainland, the fighting on Bougainville saw many cops pay the ultimate price. This is me and my, my best friend, Stephen Tully, we were shot by BRA. Stephen was attacked by militants while bathing in a river. When he went down to the river, he was ambushed, he was shot, chopped with the um, machetes and left in the river. They took his gun and took off. And then when the boys had the gun shot, they went down to the river and they found Stephen's body was uh, in the river. He was just 26 years old. I miss him, but you know, as I said, life goes on. I'm lucky to be alive. After taking so many casualties, the police learnt valuable lessons and now train recruits for hostile environments like Bourganville. At Mobile Squad Barracks, Police Constable Patrick Palangat is packing for a training mission out in the bush. He'll spend seven days in PNG's lawless wilderness. But packing isn't going to take very long. They're going to teach us how to survive in the bush. So when we leave camp, this is all I'm going to carry. Water bottle here, whatever else I need here, and here, and here. Plus our arms and maybe a knife and axe. That's it. We're going to go with our rations, go with no food. What kind of things will you end up eating? Snakes, maybe, snails, frogs. Uh, this survival training could mean the difference between life and death. With 80% of the country covered in dense bushland, rascal gangs in PNG often hide in the outback after committing vicious crimes in the city. And it will be Patrick's job to track down these criminals in some of the toughest terrain on earth. Usually they send mobile guys to places where people don't go and they send them after crooks that most other policemen wouldn't want to go after. They carry homemade guns, they carry bush knives, and they, like, they're willing to do grievous bodily harm to another just to get what they want. Up against ruthless criminals, Patrick is happy to have all the help he can get to stay alive. And this is what I wear usually when we go for uh, situations where we know there's going to be a shootout. It's good shit. This stuff will save your life. Yeah. In Papua New Guinea, a culture of tribal violence and high levels of poverty mean that the cops are trying to control a criminal element of society that has no regard for the law. 
The country's isolated highlands provide the perfect hideout for criminals on the run from the cops. The police have to train their officers to track down vicious criminals who have fled to the outback. Deep in the hostile bush, the mobile squad recruits are six days into their survival training. Police Constable Patrick Palangat knows that this training is essential for the cops to stay one step ahead of the criminals. Rascals, when they do crime, they do in the cities, they'll always run to the bush to lay low for a while. We come out here to learn how to go out in the bush and catch these suspects. Do you like catching the bad guys? Yeah, it's exhilarating. <laughs> Tracking criminals in the bush carries a high risk, so it's vital that the cops are well armed. The R15 Bushmaster. Made in US of A. <laughs> Squad leader, Inspector Holden Tomanabai, is well aware of the unique dangers of PNG's wilderness. You chasing men right into the bush. When you're not too sure you might, whether he has firearms, he has weapons, the rascal will be uh, prepared to kill the police. It's not an easy task. Evans will try and capture the, the rascals when they get into the bush. As well as fighting rascals, the training also prepares recruits for any conflicts between PNG's 800 tribes. If you have a tribal fight going up in the highlands, people fighting with bows and arrows, you would not like to bring a riot squad from London here with their buttons and shields and say, stop, stop the tribal fight, do you? And therefore, we try to design uh, trainings that are appropriate to address those type of issues. After six days without rations, the unit are finding out exactly what it takes to be a police officer in PNG. You have to be very mentally tough to be a policeman in PNG. You have to be physically tough too. Let's just say that. Back in Port Moresby, the constant struggle between the police and the criminals rages on as ruthless killings plague the city. In the settlements, there's little option but a life of crime, so there's no end to the violence in sight. I don't kill for fun. I kill for money. Who cares about the victim? Everyone's a victim. Everyone needs money to survive. If you don't have money, you might as well kill another person to eat his flesh. And the police will always be the enemy. You have every right to shoot the policemen. Who cares? Do you shoot them? They shoot you. And we are popping in. We're meant to break the law. For senior constable Andrew Cumbia, the hatred between the cops and the criminals runs deep. Like shooting a criminal, to me, I don't feel anything. I feel like I, something, I did something good for the sake of every innocent life that, that these people go around and terrorize. 